Hi, this is Peter at Nime. If you're watching this video thinking, this guy's gonna tell me all about how to apply the perfect shade of eyeliner, I'm sorry to disappoint you, you've pressed the wrong button somewhere. I'm in fact gonna tell you how to commission our new WaterMe irrigation controller, this one here. WaterMe is our new wireless 10 station irrigation controller. After installing this unit, you'll be able to control and monitor exactly how much water each plant in your garden is going to receive anywhere in the world. This controller is easier to install and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Everything that I'm going to talk to you about here in this video is also covered quite comprehensively in our easy to follow instruction manual and quick start guide. So let's get started. Firstly, I would like to just spend a short time to explain exactly what an irrigation controller is. Well, just as the name suggests, it's an electronic means of controlling exactly when and how much water we want to give our plants. We could, if we wanted to, go and hand water each of our plants. But let's face it, no one really wants to do that. We've got much better things to do with our time rather than to spend hours hand watering all of our plants. So over the years, there have been many companies which have developed an electronic method to automatically turn on and off our sprinklers at various times to do this job. What you can see behind me here is a typical older style irrigation controller. This type of controller does the job, but generally they're very complicated to use and they don't allow for changes in the weather and they can't record and monitor exactly how much water is being used. We all agree that with the price of water today, it's really important that we can manage that resource very carefully. The new types of controllers should be able to sense what the weather's doing and make automatic changes in response to the weather. In addition, it'd be good to know exactly how much water is being used. The standard type of controller is only water based on time. That's all well and good, but that doesn't really tell you if your plants are getting too little or too much water. In addition, I'm sure you have at some stage had some sort of leakage in the system. How frustrating, all that water down the drain, coming straight from your hip pocket and the environment. Wouldn't it be great to know if you have a leak in your irrigation system? wherever you are in the world. The system will not only let you know about leaks, but also let you know if the flow has changed from the last time you watered. Nymet has been a quality Australian manufacturer of valve products for 15 years, and we understand completely your requirements. We've come up with a reliable, easy to use, easy to install product that delivers the next generation of control to your fingertips. Okay. Let's begin by opening the water me box and letting you know exactly what you get and then we can start talking about how to remove your old controller from the wall if you have one and how to install the new one. So I'm just opening the box. Inside the box you'll see the controller itself and if you open those two compartments you'll see a power supply and you'll see the flow sensor. Before we can start to install the new controller, we have to remove the old one. This should be a fairly simple and straightforward process. Firstly, switch off the power at the source. Generally the voltage supplied to the controller is very low and is unlikely to cause any serious issues, but it's always good practice to isolate any power source. Now record all of the existing wiring. The best way I find to do that is to use a mobile phone or camera and take a snapshot of the existing wiring. This is useful so that when we rewire the new controller, we can replace the zones in exactly the same order. If it's a new installation, then I'll explain a little later on how we can wire the controller in a lot more detail. Remove all of the wires from the terminal strip. This may be a little tricky, so have some patience when tackling this. Some controllers like this have a push type strip, others have screws. Whichever you have, carefully remove the wires. Okay, now we've removed all the wiring from the old controller. It's now time to remove the old controller from the wall. Now, this can vary between controller and controller. Some have screws behind and some have screws in front. You'll just need to use some common sense and just remove the screws as you see them. This particular one has the screws from behind, so I can actually just remove it from the wall just by lifting it up and removing it, and then unplugging it from the power source, just like that. Once you've removed the old controller from the wall, you'll be left with the wiring coming out from the wall, just like that. 
If you have a new installation, you'll have to prepare the wiring before installing the new unit. You'll have to purchase a multi-core wire. This wire comes in various core sizes. The number of cores will depend on how many zones you'll want to control. For example, if you want to connect six valves, a master valve and a flow sensor, you'll need at least one wire for each valve, in this case seven. You'll need one wire for the ground, that makes eight, and you'll need three wires for the flow sensor. That makes a total of 11. The wire comes normally in groups of three. So in this case, you'll need at least a 12 core wire. It's always good practice to allow for extra, just in case you want to expand your irrigation system down the track. You can now install your new Watermy irrigation controller on the wall, just like I have here. Push the wires either through the rear rubber grommet, just like I have, or if you prefer, you can run them centrally up and down the wall here through the central grommet. Once the wires have been pushed through, connect the wires to the terminal strip. If you had the old controller, you should have taken note of which valve belongs to which zone. For more detailed information on the exact wiring details, please follow the instructions or the connection diagram shown on the unit itself. It's important to know that the ground for the flow sensor is not the same ground as the valves. They should be separated. You'll find a lot more information in your instructions about that. Once you've connected all the wiring, you're up to configuring your Wi-Fi network. That will be explained in the upcoming videos. Thanks very much for listening and I'll speak to you next time.